Welcome to What is Enough, Part 5. Now we said this is personal. Your dreams are your dreams. What you like is what you like. The beauty of this is if you determine what you like, you'll set yourself on a course to what really works for you in your day-to-day -day living. And so much of our time day-to-day -day, is spent thinking about and working to make money. And this is again about financial integrity and fulfillment. So review your answers if you need to, keep tracking your expenses, chart your make versus spend in the workbook, complete that dream exercise, take a moment, review your answers, and ask yourself, what did you come to understand from these exercises? It could be that, oh, I am making more than I spend, but I don't have a lot to show for it. Or I'm doing a great job right now managing my money. I just don't have any passion or love or fulfillment for the work I'm doing. Or maybe I'm tremendously fulfilled in my work and I'm doing well, but I'd like to do something more something that would bring more fulfillment in the work that I'm doing. It could be any of these things. Maybe there's an alignment. Maybe there's a, a, a gap between what you're doing today and what would be most fulfilling to you. Just simply make note of it. There's no action you need to take. Just become aware and look at, and we'll look at how do you value your life energy today? See, when you think about valuing life energy, what you're really doing is increasing your consciousness and awareness about spending in a way that helps you to decrease or eliminate the amount of life energy that flows out of you unnecessarily. See, it's really rewarding to work really hard to make something for something you really want that's really fulfilling. But remember that gun to the head, your money or your life? Well, take my money before you take my life. But what if I give that up over 30, 40, 50 years unknowingly and unnecessarily because I'm simply trading my time and energy for money for things unnecessarily? So I want to conserve that life energy by what? Evaluating the things that I buy in relationship to fulfillment and goals and values. I want to consciously eliminate unnecessary spending I want to really reduce spending that doesn't bring fulfillment so I can spend money on things that does. When I first went through this process, I reallocated money from some areas of my life where I was going to start spending less to other areas where I wanted to spend more. The key is net-net, same money was spent, but there was a great deal more fulfillment. I want maximum value for my money. So how would you lower monthly expenses? There are many ways or many websites out there. But remember, your quality of life is ultimately more important than your standard of living. Some of us literally sport shop. We think of shopping as a high-end athleticism to go to the mall, spend the day, and shop or to go online. So don't sport shop. Don't use it as a release. Live within your means. Take care of what you have. Wear stuff out. Replace it because it's broken or it no longer works, not because you're tired of it. Again, with that awareness that I have something that's lightly used, but I'm replacing it anyway, I'm getting rid of my life energy when I throw it away, and I'm pledging more life energy when I buy something new. Maybe that's fulfilling to you, but it might not be as fulfilling as the work it took to make the money to buy that item. Do it yourself. Become fulfilled in learning new skills and abilities where you don't have to pay others. Anticipate your needs in advance. Are you always FedExing packages on the last minute because you forget about birthdays and anniversaries? Then taking the time to anticipate your needs and others' needs might be a financial savings for you. Research, value, figure out where the real value is, not in the brand, but in the value itself. 
Find ways to get it for less. Buy used. Have the awareness that other people may not have and buy items that are lightly used. There's so many ideas. We provided some for you and we won't go through them all. But if you take a moment to hit the pause button with each of these, you may say some of these are really silly. Some of these are nickel and dime. But what you're really doing is starting to create an awareness in yourself that small changes over time compound just like interest. Maybe you choose to carpool with a friend that you've never done that before. Uh, maybe instead of running your car through a $20 car wash, you wash your car at home with a child. And you realize that I just saved an hour of my life that I would have spent making money for the car wash, but then I traded an hour of my life in time washing my own car. But I did it with a child, and therefore it was more fulfilling. And I still have the money that I can then use to buy a meal or go for ice cream later. You start, again, consciously considering the impact on time, money, and life energy. Clothing. Hit the pause button and ask yourself, is there one idea here that I could consider that might be fun? These came from a long list. Again, there are so many websites. Just search ways to save money on the internet. Uh, search FIRE. FIRE, uh, the financially independent retiring early, is a movement of people that are, are very thrifty in learning how to reduce their costs so that they can retire earlier if that's something that's important to you. But these are, again, just ideas. Whether silly or not, is there one idea here? Making large dinners in a crock pot, having leftovers that you take to work to avoid spending $10 for a lunch while at work. Household ideas, house sitting, side hustles, as they say, borrowing things from others can be awfully fulfilling because it may bring you closer to a neighbor and a relationship that you otherwise might avoid. Health care and beauty. Travel. Entertainment. So many of these over time I started doing for the simple reason I found them more fulfilling. Going to a high school or a college sport to me was more fulfilling than a professional sport, which was incredibly time consuming and very expensive. As you become more aware of money, you may become more interested in learning about money, credit cards, investments, savings accounts. We all have utilities that we have to pay. When you start thinking about having uh, money constantly flowing out of the house as it's being cooled. It's not about reducing the joy of air conditioning, but realizing maybe I could turn that thermostat up a little or down a little. It wouldn't make a big difference, but over a year, it could save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. There's so many different ideas and strategies. The key is pick one, two, or three. Think about the impact of that shift, that small behavior. Maybe making a little extra money would take away some pressure for other things that you're doing, or maybe uh, create a new sense of fulfillment. Maybe in one job that you're at, you realize you could part time to another job just to test it out to see if it's something that's more fulfilling and possibly more rewarding financially. So let's maximize our value. And how do you maximize your value? You do that by earning the top dollar that you can for your time. You put top effort into your employment when you're working and you look for the best pay you can for that effort. Whenever possible, you reduce job related expenses because you realize that in doing that, you're increasing your real hourly wage. If you can remotely work a day or two a week, you're not driving. Maybe you're not having to uh, wear clothes out that uh, you would normally wear out faster throughout the year. So you're really starting to consciously pay attention to 
what am I doing to maximize the value in the work that I am trading? And you're avoiding compromise because when you compromise your health or your values for even a short period of time, it's detrimental to achieving your long-term goals of financial integrity. The means, the journey is as important or most would say more important than the destination because you'll spend more time on the journey than you will at the ultimate destination. If you don't understand what is enough, you'll always be striving for a destination that will never arrive. You define how long you'll pursue paid employment based on fulfillment. If you find your work fulfilling, why would you retire from that? And if you're not going to retire, why would you need a huge pot of money to retire with? But if you've never found work fulfilling, then you determine a point at which you no longer trade your life energy for money. And you, you figure out, what is that going to take? I mean, what is work? Are you being productive or are you being active? Prior to the Industrial Revolution, the work week was about 15 hours per week. During the Industrial Revolution, it climbed to over 60 hours per week. And then during the Depression, it fell to about 30 hours per week. There is no work week until a work week was created. And the New Deal established a 40-hour work week. And it made the government the employer of last resort. The government became part of the ecosystem for employment. But establishing a 40-hour work week had nothing to do with productivity. It had to do with activity and standardization. So what kind of return are you getting on the work that you're doing? And when you're not working, there's something called leisure. Benjamin Honeycutt wrote a wonderful book called Work Without End. He said the extended work schedules that we have today, driven by a culture of ever-increasing time, they unwind the fabric of our family, our culture, our community. The very things that gave meaning to the life outside of our work. And when you have a sense of community, you want to be part of that community but what happens is that we perceive leisure as loneliness and boredom. It's not as exciting because there isn't the structure. There isn't the reward system in place. So we just continue to work because it seems like the best game in town. And what starts to happen is we believe that if we find the perfect job, what I like to call job charming, we'll fill our needs and we'll be inspired to have great meaning in our lives. And we try to find in our job that which we really are looking to find in ourselves, which again is a sense of belonging, community, fulfillment. So then we start to imagine that we'll find that in retirement. And I will tell you from many, many who I've spoken to is if you don't find fulfillment in your work, you will not find it in retirement. Retirement is something that was set at age 65 in 1935, over 73 years ago, at a time when the average lifespan was 63. Now, we could live 10, 20, 30, 40 years in retirement, all based on a number that someone created. So as you start to bring awareness to your own work and fulfillment, you'll also ask questions such as, is this how I want to play this game? If I can work till I'm 70 or 80 and I love the work and enjoy the work, why would I retire? If I truly hate the work that I'm doing, then how will I find work that I truly enjoy? How will I find fulfillment in retirement? And what's changed? What's changed is we're living longer and longer. So we have more time to build our own awareness of what makes us happy, which means we've got a much longer and much better opportunity of finding that fulfillment, but we have to look. We have to figure out for ourselves what is enough in each of the key areas of our life.
And work's a big part of it. Most of us, again, spend the majority of our life, five plus days a week, the majority of those days working. And there's really one key purpose of paid employment, and that is to get paid. Now, many people might disagree with that, but when you take payment off the table, does it shift your perspective about the work that you're doing? Would you continue to do it if you weren't paid? Reflect back on your hourly wage calculation in terms of what you're paid for your employment. And then think about what really counted to you and how what counts has or does not have a monetary value. Does the love of a child have a monetary value to you? Now, there's certain things that really do require money. But it's not a question of what you're doing. What you're looking at is why are you doing it? If you're working hard to take care of a family because you want to be loved by that family, what you really want is love from the family. It isn't the work, but sometimes we get lost in the fact that the work itself is the means and the ends for what we want. We get attached to jobs for emotional reasons without really understanding what the work means to us. It's very important to ask yourself, why do I work? And know that one of the key reasons of paid employment is to get paid. But ask yourself, why am I wanting to get paid? What is the payoff for me in being paid for the work that I do? How is that fulfilling? You see, in work, there's competition, cooperation, concentration, skill, absorption, contentment, a feeling of power, an ability to travel. There's achievement, self-expression. And guess what? Getting paid. But if you were to say play, like I play a competitive sport, is there competition? Yes. Cooperation? Yes. Concentration? Yes. Skill? Yes. Absorption? Yes. Contentment? Absolutely. A feeling of power when you're playing well? Sure is. The ability to travel? Yes. Achievement? Yes. Self-expression? Yes. Do I get paid for that? No. See, when you're trying to decide what you work for, all of those things that are part of work are not that different from a lot of the hobbies and the play and other aspects of our life. The big difference is we get paid for the work. In a perfect world, work provides all of these things for us. It's incredibly fulfilling and we're paid for it. And we want to be paid as well as possible. Now, is leisure scary? In Downshifting, Amy explains work for many of us is an easy and acceptable way to fill the hours. In our professional lives, we have clear rules to follow and goals to meet. By contrast, and this is the part that's scary, it's completely up to us to invent the success framework for our leisure. If you retire, and you never found fulfillment in your work, you will probably struggle in retirement. But if you find a way to be successful and fulfilled in your work, using some of the skills and the ideas we share here and many other resources available, you are likely to really create a framework for your leisure that is incredibly rewarding. So who are you? Is your job your primary sense of identity? What do you want to be when you grow up? Is that now what do you want to do when you grow up? Are you replacing your doing with our very being? As we mentioned, we've gone from citizens to consumers. And many of us feel like we've moved from human beings to human doings. We need to become citizens again, and we need to master our being. So tie it all together. Your paycheck is your current equivalent of how you've agreed to exchange your life energy for payment. It is what you pay for your money in the form of time. When I first started thinking about I am paying for my money and what I'm trading is my time, everything shifted. I started to see immediately where luxuries in my life had become clutter and were just 
bonding me to more and more endless work. And I realize that when I'm working, I'm working to be paid. And when I'm not working, that leisure time, that play has all the other fulfilling aspects of work that allow me to define and create what ideal time looks like for me when I'm not working. So if you tie it all together, it looks something like this. There's money spent towards enough. There's fulfillment from the money earned and spent. It starts with survival, moves its way up to comfort, but it stops at enough. It doesn't go cross the arc, and most of us are across this arc. This is the place where we start to have new decisions and make decisions that reduce the expenses that we must continue to put out, which, remo which removes that drain on our life energy, and we can shift back to enough-ing. What is enough-ing? Enough-ing is when you work with 100% of your energy, you earn as much as you can earn, but you're aligned with your integrity, you take care of your health, to the point that you reach the peak on the fulfillment curve, you're as fulfilled as you can possibly be at the level that money can contribute and support your enoughing. It's living at a peak state, continuously based on awareness, where am I happiest, where am I most fulfilled, and where does money play a role in that process? So before part six, Take a moment, any notes that you've made, track your expenses, keep track of your make versus spend chart, and just check these boxes as you, as you complete them and reflect on what was important to you as part of this course. Write down your insights from part five, notes and answers. Again, make spend, how is that proceeding for you? And in our final part six, We'll look at your freedom point. We'll look at the nature of financial independence is only possible if it's finite. And we'll look back at what it means to not only be enough, but to live at the point of a nothing.